This is what I love about my bike, a crisp shifting. When we have no problems with the drivetrain, when the gear change is so crisp and nice, believe me, you can have 20 years old bike, it will feel like new. We are also getting faster because we can bridge that gap suddenly, we can power through the corners, we can, on the mountain bikes, we can just shift under load on those steep climbs in the racing conditions at least. So this is super important to have good shifting. Uh, now, in the process of preparing tutorial on how to adjust the gears, I found out that it is actually pointless to even start it if your bike suffers from one of the six issues I'm gonna cover. So we're gonna start with the most common ones and I will also explain to you very shortly how to easily remove that problem so that you can proceed to adjust your gears and then have fun riding. Let's start with number one. Number one, the most common problem causing poor shifting both on the rear and front derailleur is dirt on the cables, housings and cable guides. I'm going to show you now how to easily find out whether your cables and housings should be either cleaned or even replaced. Of course, before spending money on new cables and housings, we can try to clean those. If you have the external cable routing, you can shift to the lowest gear, then without pedaling, shift back so that your, your cable will be loose, then clean this part of the cable and then you can remove the housing from the guide and see exactly what's inside. This one is very clean, but you can always clean it, put some loop inside and then in this way enhance uh, the shifting performance and do that with all the parts of your housing. The housing, the last part to the, which goes to the rear derailleur, uh, that's the one which gets the most dirt, so make sure this one is always clean and maybe you're not gonna have to replace the cable and the housing. Cleaning this little slider under the frame can also be a good idea and it takes maybe a minute or two. This is actually very easy to find out. Um, this is the road shifter, you can do the same with the mountain bike one. Uh, this is the natural play of my shifter. That means I'm not pulling the cable just yet. But as soon as I feel with my finger, I'm now putting some force there. So I'm pulling the cable. I want my rear derailleur to see, respond to that. I'm not fully changing the gear. This is the full gear change. I'm only starting to pull the cable. As you can see, the rear derailleur responds beautifully and that means all my cables are very very clean but if your uh, derailleur doesn't really respond up to almost the, the whole click that means um, your cables are dirty and just cause so much so much friction this is perfect uh, example on how it should work so i don't have to replace uh, anything or even look because this is very good the second pretty common problem will be bent derailleur hanger or and bent the rear derailleur itself. Now, the rear derailleur hanger, that's the pretty vulnerable part of our bike. Why is it so? It has to respond to some impacts like when we crash and there is some impact uh, towards the rear derailleur or something gets in between of our spokes, especially on the mountain bike. It is much better op option to either bend or even completely break the hanger than to break or damage our precious frame, right? So quite many cyclists, especially beginners, would have this hanger bent and they even don't know about it. But the shifting will be affected pretty much because this top pulley, which is the guide pulley, has to be in line with the cassette. When it's in line, it will guide the chain exactly as it's supposed to. So look at your rear derailleur, this part here, and it should be just vertical. Now, uh, if you change the gears in the front, uh, here in this position now, my chain is in, perfectly in line, but if, if I would change to the bigger um, chain ring in the front, you know, the derailleur will respond just a little bit to the chain that also bends when it goes to the crankset. Uh, but more or less, it should be vertical. This one is perfectly uh, vertical. Uh, so make sure that your derailleur hanger is also in line with the cassette vertical. 
it should be like that most of the hangers will be replaceable which is really good but just check out if you're gonna see that your derailleur goes like this or like this there is no chance you're gonna adjust your gears perfectly now yes you may try to fix the derailleur hanger if it's the structural part of a whole frame like on most of the vintage bikes you're gonna have to try to fix it but do it very slowly uh, otherwise on those uh, newer bikes uh, it's not really expensive stuff so if you fix it you're lucky if you're not lucky with fixing it because it breaks you can just replace it no problem I was never lucky uh, trying to fix the bent uh, derailleur so if it's really bent uh, if it's really damaged you're gonna have to replace it the third problem is worn out chain if you use a chain wear indicator this one indicates that the chain is almost new but if it drops down in between the pins that would show the chain is worn out if it is it will decrease largely it will largely decrease uh, the shifting performance uh, if you don't have chain wear indicator you can try to pull the chain here uh, on your crankset as you can see there are maybe one two pins that move uh, when I when I pull the chain outwards here to the to the right but uh, if you see more links moving on those uh, teeth of the chain ring that means you're not gonna be able uh, to have crisp shifting because worn out chain will have will bend a lot and as you can imagine if the rear drill tries to pull the chain on certain you know, sprockets on the cassette and the chain bends it's not going to be able to work perfectly and here is number four very easy one play on the rear derailleur on the fr or the front derailleur as well you can try to do it with the front derailleur also if you feel a lot of play here there is almost no movement at all uh, the derailleur actually moves uh, along with the hanger so this is just perfect but some um, some derailleurs over some thousands of kilometers would get this play from back to back like to the sides uh, outwards and inwards that would mean this derailleur will not be as uh, precise as at the beginning also check the pulleys if the pulleys have excessive play uh, and the derailleur has the play you're not going to be able to have crisp shifting um, this is not so common but there are some derailleurs uh, prone to getting uh, this play for the MTB I remember it was the first generation of the SLX I didn't like it uh, after some hundreds of kilometers uh, even it would uh, get uh, just annoying and impossible uh, to really adjust so just make sure your derailleur does not have too much uh, of a play and then you'll be able to adjust your gears Yes, you can definitely try to replace the pulleys only. I remember on one of those poor shifting SLX derailleurs, we did replace the original pulleys with the XT ones and the shifting got better. And here is problem number five, which actually my Super 6 does suffer from. Can you hear that? Can you hear this uneven sound? Indicated that some of the teeth uh, on the cassette try to scoop up the links of the chain. So the problem here is popular with those cheaper wheel sets uh, and it's the free hub because the free hub does move here. It doesn't have a play but it moves when we spin. Try to, to look at the, uh, at the cassette here. Yeah, the bike is moving a little bit but the cassette, it does move. So this also affects the shifting. The, shift, the shifting on my bike uh, is actually crisp, but you can hear sometimes some, some clicking, especially when spinning backwards. So the free hub also can cause this problem. And finally, the sixth issue, which is not very common with the new bikes, but it can happen to those older bikes, which are being stored in different conditions for many months or even years. That would be the jammed shifters, both road and mountain bikes. The shifter inside is a pretty complicated mechanism usually. Uh, it needs some grease, it needs some um, oil and when the dirt and the water come in over the years and months of use and not cleaning, 
uh, those um, mechanisms can be just jammed. So then you would try to uh, just clean it as good as you can without maybe taking it apart and often just spraying some nice lubricant, lubricant inside and trying to move it all the way uh, upshifting and downshifting it can solve the problem uh, usually jam shifters would not let you release the cable because uh, when you pull you use uh, the force of your fingers so that's normally working uh, but uh, releasing the cable could be the problem so try to just spray some lubricant inside if it doesn't work then you have to take it apart. Great, now that you have solved all the problems means you can start adjusting your gears and goodness at the end, no issues with the drivetrain means the adjustment will be pretty easy and we'll talk about it on another episode. Thanks for watching, see ya!